We continue now at the top of Daf Chav Zayin Amid Aleph in Masech Sota. This is Sota Daf 27a. The Gemara is continuing a statement of Shmuel. Shmuel says a person should marry a Duma, which is a woman who is su- suspect of promiscuous behavior, behavior, Bas Duma, and better not to marry the daughter of this Duma, the daughter of someone who is promiscuous. Shazuba mitipa ksheira vizuba mitipa psula. Because this one, meaning the Duma, she comes from a kosher drap, but the other one, the Bas Duma, the daughter of the one who's promiscuous, she comes from a drop which is possible, which is disqualified, meaning to say, as Rashi says, Vizuba mi bi apsula shema me ovid kochavim o mamzer. Maybe she comes from a non Jew, maybe she comes from a mamzer, and therefore Shmuel says it's preferable to marry a Duma. We'll look at the previous Rashi, Duma nitenis vinid beres befi kol al niufim, meaning everyone speaks about the fact that she's with other men, therefore she's considered promiscuous, and again Shmuel says that's preferable, it's preferable to marry the Duma rather than the Bas Duma. But the Gemara continues for Rabbi Yochanan Amr, and Rabbi Yochanan says the other way around, Yisa Adam Basdum, it's preferable for a person to marry the daughter of someone who's promiscuous, Vial Yisa Duma, not to marry someone who is promiscuous, Shazu Omedes Becheskes Kashus, because this one has a presumption that she is kosher, Vizu Eino Omedes Becheskes Kashus, and the other one, the Duma, she does not have a chazaka, she does not have a presumption that she is kosher. Rashi explains, Shazu Habas Omedes Becheskes Kashus, this daughter, she has a presumption of being kosher, of being of 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 being innocent, um, Mutaris Laval, and she's mutter to her husband, and we don't suspect that she comes from a tip of Sula, meaning like a mamzer or a nanju. Because most of the active relations will have been with the husband. We can assume that the Bas Duma comes from this woman's husband. But this one, meaning the Duma, she doesn't have a presumption of innocence. She's going to be she's going to commit adultery, she's going to have znus with him. And that's going to make her usher to him. He won't see, he won't know about it. He won't divorce her. There's going to be here an act of relations with her. Eventually, it's going to come to an act of relations that is also, that is prohibited. And so, therefore, again, we have this machlokus between Shmuel and Rabbi Yochanan. Shmuel says it's preferable to marry the Duma, and Rabbi Yochanan says it's preferable to marry the Bas Duma. And so the Gemara now says, Meisve, we have the following question from a Brisa. No say Adam Duma, it says that a person marries a Duma. So that seems to follow Shmuel and seems to be against Rabbi Yochanan. But the Gemara says, Amar Rava, Rava says, Vitizbra, is that logical? Does the Bryce even make sense? No say Lechatchila, does the Bryce mean to say that a person Lechatchila should marry, is able to marry a Duma, someone who's promiscuous? That's not what it means. Ela im Nasa, rather what it means is if the person married a Duma, so Bidi Eved, we say that he can stay married to her. So if that's what it means, you're already changing the language, Tani Nami Bas Duma, so you might as well already learn it and change it to, means to say a Bas Duma, the daughter of someone who's promiscuous. It doesn't need to necessarily be a question on Rabbi Yochanan. And the Gemara continues, V'hilchas and Allah is Yisa Adam Bas Duma V'yal Yisa Duma. It's preferable for a person to marry the daughter of a, a woman who's promiscuous and not to marry a woman who's promiscuous. The Tani Rev Tachlifa Bar Marava coming to Rabbi Avo because Rev Tachlifa Bar Marava taught before Rabbi Avo Isha Mizana Bonel Ksheirin that if you have a, a woman who commits znus, the assumption is that her children are kosher because Rov Beilos Achar Habal. Because again, the majority of the act of the acts of relation are going to be assumed to have been from the husband, and therefore the children of this woman are presumed to be kosher. And the Gemara continues, Boy, Rav Amram, Rav Amram asks the following question, Haisa Prutza Biyoser, let's say she's very promiscuous. So Ma, what would be the halacha? Rashi explains, Haisa Prutza Biyoser, already this woman, we can suspect that really most of her acts of relations are with other people. So Ma, Shayhu Banak Sherem, so what's the halacha in terms of her children? Do we presume that they are kosher? And the Gemara explains, what's the question? According to the one who holds, that a woman, she only becomes pre- uh, pregnant around the time of her vest, around the time of her period. As Rashi over here says, There's one opinion that a woman becomes pregnant one day before the time comes for her period. Now, the husband's not able to know when that's going to be. He's not able to watch her and keep her from acts of znus at that time, that she shouldn't come, become pregnant with an act of znus, meaning in that, in, the, in that situation, if you hold that's when a woman becomes pregnant, it's really impossible for the husband to guard against it. So the Gemara is saying, according to that opinion,
opinion. So lo ti boilach. So then it's not even a question. Delo yada bava lo minterla. He doesn't know when the vest is. He's not able to watch for this. And so therefore, certainly there's no presumption of innocence in terms of the children. It could very well be that the children came from somebody else. Kiti boilach. Now, when is it a question to you? It's according to the one who says that a woman becomes pregnant around the time of her tzvila, around the time of her, her immersion in the mikvah. So that already we know when that is. So my, so what's the halacha? Kevin de yada, but since he knows when she's going to the mikvah, so nature minterla, so he can watch over her and make sure that there's no acts of znus around that time. Odilmar maybe kevin de prutsu bios or lo, since she's very promiscuous, maybe again we have to assume no, we have to assume that the children are not kosher, and the Gemara says take with the Gemara leaves it as a question. And Rashi says, kiti boilach, when, it is, when is it a question for you? Pluks of a mesachas nida. This is a machlokas in terms of when a woman becomes pregnant. In mesachas nida, samach letfilasa. The other opinion is it happens near the time of her immersion in the mikvah. La'achar shetav la biyom tfilasa o liyom machar. After she immerses, either it happens on that day or it happens the next day. O dilmar may be kevin de prutsi hi biyosa. Since she's very promiscuous, la matzi minter la, he's not able to watch her. She nishmetas me'atz lo pisom. She's able to get away from him suddenly. And so therefore it is a problem. And again, the Gemara leaves it as a question. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, V'yelu shebezin v'chulu, the following husbands. So the Bezin issues the warning on their behalf because they're not capable of issuing a warning to their wives. And the Gemara says, Tanu Rabbanon, the rabbis taught, Ish, the Pasuk says, Ish. Ma Tamad Lomar, Ish, Ish. Why does the Pasuk say Ish twice? L'rabos, Eish Ha'sheresh, Ve'eish Ha'shota, Ve'eish Ha'shiyamam. That comes to include the wife of a deaf mute and the wife of an imbecile and the wife of an insane person. V'shaholach ba'al l'medina sayam, or let's say her husband traveled far away. Or let's say her husband was in prison. In all of those situations, the husband is not able to issue the warning. So Shabazin Makan and Lohan, the Bezin can issue the warning on their behalf. They can warn the wife, Laposlan Miksubasan, in order to disqualify them from receiving their Ksuba. In other words, the purpose of the warning is to disqualify the wives from the Ksuba. Yachol Aflashko. So now I might think that the warning is even in order to give them to drink, to, to give them to drink from the waters of the Sota. Talmud Lomer, the Pasuk says, Vehaviho Isha Sishto. It says that the man, the husband, has to bring his wife to drink the water, and therefore if he's not capable of doing that, she will not drink just based on the warning of the Bezdin. Rabbi Yossi, Omar, Rabbi Yossi says, Afla hashkosa, this warning is even effective to bring her to drink. And when her husband gets out of jail, so then he'll be able to bring her to drink. In other words, she can't drink without her husband, that's true. But if her husband, in the situation where he's in prison, if he gets out of prison, so then this warning of the Bezin will be effective. Then now if she violates that warning, he can bring her to the Beis HaMikdash to drink the waters. And the Gemara explains, What is the machlokis between the Rabbanon and Rav Yossi? Rabbanon savri bo'inon vikine vehevi. The Rabbanon hold that we need that the one who warns is the one who brings, meaning the husband has to issue the warning if he's going to bring her to, to drink the waters. For Rav Yossi sovereign, Rav Yossi holds lo bo'inon vikine vehevi. There is no requirement. We do not require vikine vehevi. We don't need that the husband issue the warning in order for him to bring her to drink the waters. And the Gemara continues, Tanu Rabbon and the rabbis taught, the Pasuk says, Ashatiste Isha Tachas Isha, Lahakish Ish Li Isha, Vi Isha Li Ish. Pasuk says, Isha Tachas Isha, and that comes to compare the husband to the wife and the wife to the husband. This was a drasha that was noted earlier, but was not explained exactly what it's referring to. And now the Gemara says, Lamai Hilchasa, for what practical halacha, what does it mean that we're comparing Isha Li Isha and Isha Li Ish? And the Gemara says, Amar Rav Sheishas, Rav Sheishas says, Kishem Shem Hu Suma Lohaya Mashka, just like if he, if the husband was blind, so then she doesn't drink the water, as the pus, as it's written in the Pasuk, Venela Me Eine Isha. It says that this was something hidden from the eyes of her husband, implying that he's at least able to see. Kachi Sota with her. With, with her, Em Haisa Suma, if she's blind, Lo Haisa So she's not going to drink. That's the comparison from the husband to the wife. Rav Ashi, Amar Rav Ashi says, the other direction, Kishem Shachi Geres, Vegidem Mes Lo Haisa So just like if she's lame, or let's say she doesn't have hands, so she's not going to drink, Tachsiv, as it's written in the Pasuk. And Rashi explains, Ashatiste Isha Tachas Isha, Kroy Yiseiru Ledrasha. This is an extra Pasuk to Darshan, Besof HaParsha Zos Torah Saknos Vagomer. It's at the end of the Parsha over there. Lahakish Isha Le Isha Kedem Mefarish Vazal Amai Hilchasa. The Gemara will explain why we're comparing. And so again, Rav Ashi, Amar Rav Ashi says, and Rashi explains, Mar Mefarish Akesha Di Isha Le Isha. One is explaining the comparison of the husband to the wife in one direction. O Mar Mefarish Akesha Di Isha Le Isha. And the other is explaining the Hekish of the wife to the husband the other direction. Velo Pligi. There's no Machlokas over here. They're just explaining how the Hekish can go in both directions and we will continue with this discussion in the next video on Dafchav Zayin Amid Base.